minus 80 seconds. T minus 70 seconds. T minus 60 seconds. T minus 50 seconds. T minus 40 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Welcome to a special Outpost Frequencies brought to you by TheLastMovieOutpost.com for all of your ear movie news, reviews and everything cool about film. Today is a special one because we are going to be talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The fifth. No, there's no Dom. <laughs> um, hello, Matt. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So we have both been to the cinema... And we have both seen the fifth Indiana Jones movie. Um, we don't know what each other's thought of it so far. <laughs> uh, it didn't send a wrong link. Hang on a minute. Uh, I think Sean's going to join us. I think Sean just wants to enjoy, jo join us just so he can slag off Kathleen Kennedy, which is fair enough. <laughs> um, there we go. So Sean, Sean is going to be Sean is going to be here. Um. <laughs> Righty ho. So, um, in a nutshell, what did you make of it? Honestly, mate, what a fucking great time I had. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, oh, I absolutely loved it. I can't believe I, I'm saying this. I can't say I loved it, but what I can say is I was entertained more than I thought I would be. Mm. Can you hear me all right, by the way? I've set up late. Is my mic working? Yeah, it's fine. This is why I said I'd be on 10 too, so we could check things like that. Yeah, but <laughs> anyway. I've been running around like a blue ass fire, like, trying to get dinner ready for this stream. Um, <laughs> no, 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 before, be before we start, no, before we go any further, we will be talking about spoilers later on in the film. So if you haven't seen it yet or anything else, I suggest you watch this live stream later. We're just going to go there. Okay, so you really liked it. I did. I mean, let's be honest, we was always expecting the worst and the rumours that we've heard, especially from a certain Mr. Doomcock, was expected to be a total crap. And in fact, I went with my son today and he said to me, please don't sit there swearing and rolling your eyes over and all that, <laughs> like, like you did when we went to see The Flash. And I was like, no, I'm going to go in and hope for the best. And I really liked it. And I left the cinema, I said to my boy, I went, that was actually all right. And then... We got home and we was talking about it. And then I started writing a review for the site, which I didn't get finished, obviously, before the stream. And I started remembering things. I was like, oh, my God, that was actually, that was so much better than than I thought it was originally. I, I've got to be, I had the same expectation as you. I expected to sit down and watch a dog turd, like, go slowly going white for two hours. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Sean. Hey, buddy. 
Hi, Sean. How's it? Okay, Doug. Um, we've literally just got started. Now, Sean has joined us, even though he hasn't seen it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't really care about spoilers. Uh, so, so we're, we're just going to talk about it. Now, Matt, uh, uh, was, you, was you serious when you said you loved it? Yeah, man, I really, really enjoyed it. Okay. I thought it was, it was, it wasn't terrible and it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. It, there are issues with it, I'm not going to lie, but I did feel entertained. Yeah, absolutely. I was entertained from start to finish. Okay. So, so, so bottom on. line, bottom line up front, does Andy die at the end? Spoiler alert. If, no. We do, no, he doesn't. Okay. It's a very fine fitting send off if this is the last one. No, see, weirdly, I I thought the end for me. Well, well let's get let's get to the end later on. All, All right, right, let's this, get to the end later on. Well, we just, just, you, we, we just blew it, so you must. Have <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean, just the actual end. I just let's just was start very... from the beginning. Phil, how many yeah. stars did you give it out of five? Two. I well, gave that... it three and a half, maybe four. That's not a ringing endorsement from either one of you. That, that, how do you go oh. from like you loved it to three and a half? No, out of five, that's still what seventy-five oh. percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, that's not bad. I maybe the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm remembering, the more I'm thinking maybe it's a four. So let's go through wait it. Wait a minute before before we <laughs> before you get to the plot. Here's a few things that I want to know. <laughs> okay. that, don't, that don't have anything to do with the plot so let me let me let me say them and then you can answer them how d does you know is the action good as far does he look like an old man foolish is the cgi really dodgy and crappy and dog shit does it, would... it, is it woke is it so woke that you spend you know at least half the movie rolling your eyes that, I, I, you hold your horses and we'll go for it as we go along. yeah Okay, so, last question. Live stream is going to be over in about five minutes. Does it? Is <laughs> it like? Is it violent? Like I, I've, who Renridge predicted there would be no actual killing by Andy. No, no, that was killing. It was called Indiana Jones. Well, but he it said, wasn't... but if you'll remember his article, he said Andy people died in the last one, but it was always indirectly. Like Indiana Jones didn't just like pull out a gun and blow him away, or you know what I mean? No, it no, was no, always he's... like. He ducks a punch, and the guy accidentally goes too far and falls over the cliff. Not no, no, no. There is there is a few bullet holes and whatnot of, yeah. of things. So I mean, you know, yeah, that people do die. They don't die as gruesomely as, for example, um, do we get any okay. Vietnam War? Do we get any Vietnam War footage? No, 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 no. It's not as good as that. Uh, bad as that. Good as that. Uh, people do do die though. Quite, you know. I, I love uh, it when like, people. I love it when people die. Let's start off. So, the beginning Stop of the movie. Us. Let us talk about it, Sean. Okay, I'm sorry. Does Indy use the toilet? Go no, ahead, he doesn't. Phil. Go ahead, Phil. You can talk about it. <laughs> Go for it. Start. Go for it. Um, Are you going to start or not? It starts off in 19... I'm going to say 1946 ish It's towards the no. end of the war. No, the war ended in 45. The war, mate, <laughs> the war, yeah, you're here. I don't know if you know this or not, but the, <laughs> the war ended in 1945. Field. It starts the, not, the for, bad, us. not the bad, for us. Not for us. It didn't. <laughs> the, bad, the bad guys won, and the war ended anyway, in 1945. It's coming to the end of World War Two, yes. and young, de-aged Indiana Jones has been caught by the. Um, oh, actually, let's start before that. Mangold did play with the logos. Uh, the logo came up of Disney, and then the Paramount logo came up. Now, in all other four movies, Lucas has always played with the Paramount logo, and then the Paramount logo disappeared, and I thought, oh, he's not done that. And then the Lucasfilm logo came up, but then that faded into a lock on a door. So I, okay. I was kind of like, yeah, I was like, Right, okay. You know, he did do on the power out one, but okay. But anyway, yeah, so we've got a de-aged Indy de um, looking for something in a castle somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. It's and it's the, oh, was it? I, I figured it was somewhere like that. But where? they are looking for the... Where did you, the, the, where did you say it was? It's in oh, Poland. Somewhere. Poland? 
yeah, yeah. it's mentioned it's mentioned oh. later on okay okay but they are um indy is looking for the lance of longinus which is apparently the holy spear the one that killed jesus when he was on the cross whilst he's there toby jones his good friend uh called shaw who we've never seen before obviously is kind of hiding in the woods um <laughs> And then Voller turns up, who's played by Mads Mikkelsen, uh, and he's looking for this spear as well. I didn't know now, he was even... I, I didn't even know he was in this movie. Who, oh, Mads? Really? Yeah, yeah, I love that guy. Yeah, like, yeah. How did that slip? I guess because I... <laughs> I guess because I just had no interest in it. Yeah, yeah. Until, <laughs> listen, honest to God, until Matt said he loved it, I had no intention of going and seeing this movie. When Matt said he had a good time, I was sold instantly. I'm not. Ah, they, I'm not. I'm no, not joking. good man. Yeah, we've I'm got quite joking. similar taste in films. Um. So, but now this was my first issue with this was the de-aged indie was not good. It well, let me just interject here because it was good and the technology is remarkable. However, I think the problem is Phil is the fact that it's the age-old problem with the human eye can detect when there's something quite off about a digital face. And there were parts of it that looked amazing, but my brain couldn't, my brain just couldn't accept it. It didn't look shit. It wasn't flash terrible. It looked remarkable, but there's that human problem with the human eye knowing when there's something not quite right. Uncanny Valley. There you go. I mean, with it, what I got from it was, it reminded me of Robert Patrick in Terminator 2 is very expressive less. Even when he's fighting Arnie, He's never like straining to like pick okay. Arnie up and fight him. His face is always very and well, it's, if you, suppo- uh, it's it's supposed to be that way. That's what I mean. But in this, oh. there are sequences where Indy is fighting and stuff, but I'm looking at his face and his face has just got no expression on it. And it's not like he's you know, to sort of like throw a punch. Well, he's just kind of throwing a punch. Phil, to be honest, that kind of is the default setting for Harrison Ford's last acting, <laughs> ten, acting in the last ten years, though. You know, but I, it just, I think for me, but when it, there, uh, when it, there were, it really stuck out. But when there were scenes of him where he was just talking or trying to be incognito, he looked good. I give you the fact that there's there's scenes where he was fighting or throwing a punch. You like, I probably you've probably hit the nail on the head there, mate. If I'm honest, it's like there wasn't any like aggression but it was it was the same it looked good it did look good let's move on from this it's a nip it was hang on it was the same level it was the same level of de-aging that it had in tron with jeff bridges oh that's not good no it it wasn't it wasn't that bad at all it was more like um robert Robert, downey jr in in, um the marvel one that's that that, that's kind of the gold standard isn't it it was, anyway. it was all right. Anyway, yeah, it was pretty so good. basically, they basically find out that this lance, this holy lance, is actually a fake. They were going to take it to the Fuhrer, but Mads Mikkelsen's character finds something else. Half I like. I, the, I, I appreciate that you still refer to him as the Fuhrer. That's very respectful of the field. <laughs> so you know, I, 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 we were on first name basis, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I so any, <laughs> anyway, so Mads finds this half of this. I, I can't remember what he called it now, but basically oh, half of this dial of dial, yeah, yeah, half half of the dial of destiny. Um, there is then a chase sequence where they are trying to get this thing out on a train. Indy and Toby Jones, sure, uh, end awesome. up on the on yeah on the on the on the train. Um. Again, this whole sequence was a bit kind of right. Nobody realizes who he is because at one point he literally goes in just because he's wearing a uniform and and picks yeah, up the box but, and goes to walk out with it. But it's the whole hiding in plain sight, Phil. They're all drinking, you know. They're on the brink of losing the war. The Nazis are so they're all drinking. Some of them obviously a little bit happy about going home, but a lot of them depressed. So he's just basically moving through. What I will say about the beginning is it's pretty much like. It starts like all the Indiana Jones films where we meet Indy halfway through some crazy little caper. Yeah, I love that. What do they call yeah. it? In, in And he's got to escape. He defies all physics and gravity and logic. And it's there's slapstick moments that don't take you out of the film like The Flash did and all the other Marvel crap that you get. 
And it was just a good 20, 25 minute sequence of CG. fighting and so let me it, add- some of the CG was a little bit, but it didn't. I just sat there for 25 minutes. I was like, okay, this is an unexpectedly good start. This is did, like an old Indiana Jones film. Did you go into it like, and I'm not this, I'm not being like, I'm not, not joking and not trying to be nitpicky, but did you just, um, did you go into it feel like ready to nitpick it? Like, did you go into it with like a, because I All think right. Matt, Matt went into it obviously with more of an open mind, and I and you from the two of you, it sounds like Matt went into it with going like, "Oh, give it a chance." Where you went into it like, no, "I'm no, gonna no. hate." I I genuinely wanted to give it a chance, and I wanted to enjoy it, but I do know that it had Kathleen Kennedy. Well, there you go. I think there was her. a no, no, no. I'm not. No, but, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's not an indictment. I just. It, I think there's a clear. You know, it's like if you go into it like. Oh, Kathleen, that bitch! You're gonna, I, you're gonna. You know honestly, what I, mean? I honestly tried to enjoy it as much as I could, and like I say, at the end of the day, I still feel entertained, but it still had problems. And I mean, there are lots of movies like that. I, I, we've not talked about this in the past, but like for example, like Back to the Future, I think it's got major plot hole problems, but it's full Ooh, entertainment. How dare it's got you, plot you holes. Son it's... of a bitch! <laughs> I'm gonna get in my car, <laughs> get there in your car. I'll be there in about an hour and a half. <laughs> Oh, good. We can go for a drink. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got it's got plot hole problems, but you can ignore them because you're just having so much fun. And this movie, I, I felt entertained, but we are going to get onto this. So this is when it did start. So basically, then it goes to, uh, it, uh, what's his name? Toby Jones and Indy escape, and they escape with this half of the Dial of the Destiny. Then it goes to modern times, which is then, what, 1966? I think uh, 69 because they've just landed on the moon on the moon. Sorry. Yeah. 60, 69. Well, um, they've apparently landed on the moon. supposedly landed on the moon. Well, supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. Um, Indy is now an 80 year old. He, he's, he's effectively now Luke Skywalker in the last Jedi. Yeah. And this is where I let, I let out a groan and my son looked at me. Yeah. <laughs> Because with we, it, we're, it, it, we're greeted, you, we've had after this massive 25 minutes of old Indy being Indiana Jones, we're suddenly old Indy asleep in front of a sofa. As gets woken up by a, some music. A single the, old the, man the moaning about the Beatles but, being played. And I was like, oh, yeah. here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here's Kennedy. Here's Kathleen Kennedy. That then does move on because he goes to work and he's now a professor. And obviously he's eight years old, so fair enough. But in the previous Indies, when he's in his classroom, everybody loves him and everybody pays attention to him. Now, when he's talking, everybody is bored. Everybody's falling asleep. He's really dull. And again, he's just it, he's he's he, he's been Luke Skywalker. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I don't. I mean, that is kind of probably accurate for the 1960s baby boomer hippie era. You know, they probably would look at a guy like him and be like, "Oh man, it's not. He's not hip." Or, or whatever Boomer said. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, that's pretty uh, much how it was done, if I'm fair. It's pretty much done like he's an old... I mean, they're celebrating the moon landing or the return he's, of he's, Armstrong and everyone else. They, 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 were cel- they were celebrating the monumental achievement <laughs> of Stanley Kubrick's <laughs> filmmaking. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and he's got... Yeah, because he's, he's literally his last day at work, so he's retiring, so he's obviously a little bit like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, but then... This is where the problem did start for me. Is Phoebe Waller Bridge turns up? Uh, I like her. <laughs> I don't understand she... why people don't like her. I think she's all right. right. She's quite funny. Her character in this is Mary I Sue. She's not. Yes, yeah, she. Every she's cocky. She's overly confident. She's better than India. Everything. She, but I, I, I kind of saw the rest of the movie now as Helena Shaw and the Dial of Destiny with guest, special guest star appearance by Indiana Jones. No. It wasn't he, Indy's story. It was about her. He saves her. She saves him. She tries to save him and fucks up, and he ends up saving her. She is headstrong and An- annoying. Bombastic. Yeah, a bit like how Indy was in The Last Crusade with Sean Connery being the polar opposite. In fact, there was a lovely bit where she's cheering about escaping and he's like, this is nothing to celebrate. My One of my friends has just been killed. Yeah. So mm. he brought her back mm. down to earth. So I'm sorry, I disagreed with that. There were, there were times where you're like, oh, okay, she's fighting grown men. I mean, obviously. Then I'm like, obvi- oh. 
obviously there. I mean, it can't be denied that there is that subtext, the wo- the, the the whamming, you know. Yeah. I mean, it, so now the the question is, is it bearable? But it, in relation to if you look at it as the, uh, you know, the uh, a mirror image of Last Crusade, if it's done well, then it's done well. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you know, it it, it works in that. It, 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 I, like I, I, like I've said before, we're all so sensitized to these things that it's hard. Yeah. It's very hard not to see that in it, even yeah. when maybe it's not over. You know, I don't know, but maybe you know, I ain't seen it yet. I felt I didn't get the the same impression of Last Crusade playoffs at all because to me, Phoebe Waller Bridge was just too annoying. She was just too annoying because ultimately, in the Last Crusade, Indy is still the main focus of the story, and he's there yeah. with Sean Connery, and that that you know the chemistry works brilliantly. Whereas in this, she is just annoying. And I remember reading why that hate, one of the why do you hate women, man? Oh, just a natural. Um, oh, okay. you know, the same the same reason everybody else does. Gaze <laughs> off the gaze off the dude. <laughs> um, but no, with it she. Oh, I've got my bloody point now, idiot. You were saying um, that she was a, she, she was a, she was the main character, and Indy was taking a backseat. That's what you were saying. But she, uh, just her character was, it was too focused on her character from then on. And like I say, Indy was just playing second fiddle, as with most other Disney stuff, you know, like oh, Star Wars, just... like most of the Marvel movies, like Willow and everything else. And so no, I, I just think... felt. I think Indy was her moral compass because she clearly had no moral. She was after these artifacts to sell them on the black market. And she had no scruples about killing people or betraying people to get the money that she wanted for these artifacts. And Indy acted like a Sean Connery role in some aspects where he was sort of, he wasn't amused by random killing, wasn't amused by her stealing something just to make a profit out of it. He was very much, and he said it in the in the film, this belongs in a museum, which I thought was great. And she was like, no, I can get $100,000 for this. And Wow, the trailer it, really paints a different picture of the way that th- those Do you know what? Do you sorry, know sorry, what? So that's I what I was going to say. Hang on, hang on, that's what I was going to say. Oh, go on, go on. Is I had read somewhere that with the original release, apparently – they re-edited it to cut down on Phoebe Waller-Bridge. And I thought to myself, okay. what an insufferable prick she was in the movie. If there is an edit somewhere out there where she's worse, it would have been absolutely atrocious. Uh, yeah, but again, we're kind of, we're going on hearsay and rumours about, we don't know what was cut and what wasn't cut out of it. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That no, in my I know, back of my- I know. Um, but, I know, and like I say, we are going on by these rumours. But anyway, I so. thought there was I thought there was a lot of aspects where he basically saved her, she saved him. She had a considerable lack of a moral compass where he was sort of keeping it more grounded. I just I, I again I just think they worked I think it worked well. I think there was there was elements of her, there was elements of Indiana Jones with short rounds from Temple of Doom. Because she had never a got that. sidekick. Well, she actually had a little sidekick, either. didn't she? She had a little adopted sidekick with her. Oh, yeah. But there was elements of Last Crusade with Indy acting in the Sean Connery role, as well as being Indy, you know, still fighting. And, and, and But she was very she was very headstrong. And with regards to the rumours, I can kind of see where some of them were saying how she was going to take over in Jen Jones because I was right, very fearful that, as the film went on, where she was so headstrong and sort of rushed into these scenarios, pretty much like how Indy used to be, in, especially in three, where his dad was sort of pulling him back a little bit. I thought we are going to end on a, we're going to end with her picking up the hat, and I'm not going to go there yeah. just yet. Cause we've got a little bit to go, but I don't know I, whether the rumours are true and they reign in. I don't know, but I. I, I don't anyway, know I like. anyway, I just thought it was well. She ends up. Uh, finding that Indy took her dad's half of this dial of destiny and hit it. Um, so she takes it from Indy, and just at this time, some uh, I want to say Russians turn up, but they, were they German or Russian? I think they were doing a, Ger- a Russian accent, weren't they? But they were Nazis. Well, when when she when he gave her the other half, yeah, no, that's Mads, Mads, 
Mickelson, they were all Nazis. Or Germans. I kept thought they, I kept thought they were doing a Russian accent. Anyway, no, right. no, 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 again, the, again European, this is just... European doesn't know European accents. <laughs> but with it, again, I might be being a bit nitpicky, but the two Russian guy or the two German guys were like the most conspicuous people you could possibly imagine. One of them is literally about seven foot tall and built like a brick shit house. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And it's like, he doesn't, he doesn't fit in there at all. But then they've also got this black woman who is kind of infiltrating and keeping an eye on things. And again, there, it was just kind of really, you know, the, the, the three of these people stick out like a sore thumb. Any, any of that, these people walking down the street was, and you would have. That was my first, that was my first, eye rolling moment was something happened without going too far into it something happens at the university where they're trying to get indiana jones and phoebe waller bridge where helena and the black girl i can't don't even know her name she calls because one of them is a texan isn't he they're not he's a texan who wants yeah. to be a german who's, who's learning german and she calls him a trigger happy cracker and yeah i just went oh he's he's lit He's literally me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but again, the three of them just did, didn't work. But they, they end up basically, they they end up catching Indy and Phoebe Waller-Bridge gets away with this second half of this, this dial. And it turns out Max Mickelson is, is kind of running this goon show. I think we'll have to after that now. Then they, well, there's, there's the, a nice and, mention, Sean, you'd like this. Sorry, Phil. There's a nice mention that Mads on. is an ex-Nazi, even though he's going by the name of Schmidt. Um, and he was responsible for getting Apollo 11 on the moon, apparently. Oh, so yeah. it's like a, a... There's a nice little There's a nice little nod that little. they were willing to... NASA were willing, or the American government were willing to... Yeah. Operation... Nazi yeah. Tech Operation... Education. Yeah, Operation Paperclip. Yes. Yes. Um, anyway, Indy and... Oh, the, there is then a chase sequence through CG... On a horse, in a van, on a motorbike, and again, this it, uh, for to a, me for a tube station or a subway, as they call it. Yeah, he literally rides a horse through the through the subway, and to, none of that worked. It was just all of it was just far too CG. Far, it was it didn't didn't work at what all. What is it with um, hor- what is it with horses and chase scenes lately? Like they did that in uh, John Wick three and yeah. two, and then the S, and then. Were there even horses in the last uh, Starship movie where they're on like a spaceship? Oh, yeah, the, the yeah. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there was. What's up um, with that lately? Well, I think I with no most idea. CGI these days, it's just a matter of pre built CGI models and pressing buttons. Yeah. They've obviously got a, an abundance. Of, some some, some, some <laughs> little nerds obviously just generate 5,000 different fucking horses. <laughs> yeah, Somebody, like, we'll buy that for $5. They, Cheers. They, they, they're like, we got, we got some uh, we got some four-legged uh, models left over. We need to do something with these. We already paid for them. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, yeah, like I say, that whole chase sequence was – it was too over the top. Um, and like I say, I don't, I don't think it worked. In any way, <laughs> there was also a couple of moments where there's a couple of jokes, and I mean, my cinema was quite empty. But when the jokes kicked in, it was just silent. <laughs> you know, not even a, I couldn't even hear anybody blow air through their nose. <laughs> at it, oh, you know, really? it was just sort of what? yeah. See, I thought the little slapstick comedy was was true in no, 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 style. No. It didn't take you out of the didn't take you out of the moment like the Flash did. This was just like, yeah, it's just a, uh, it's just typical indie formula. It's just like a little comment here, little comment now. Fair enough. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, well, just with it, like I say, for me, the jokes fell flat. I didn't, I didn't find it all that funny. Um, Helena and Indy then meet up, and it turns out that they do know each other. He calls her one back because the last time he saw her, he was twelve before her dad died, and her dad was looking for this. Dial of Destiny, and she wants to go looking for it. Hold on, so her then, dad is Baz, who we saw in the opening scene with the uh, Toby Jones. Toby, Toby Jones. Jones. There you go. Yeah. Um, and so off they go on an adventure to find the other half of this um, Dial of Destiny. I'm just trying to think what happened after that. Then, well, you Where skipped they go first? What, 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 what actually oh. happened was she, she was in Indies lecture and answering the questions that no one else could give a fuck to answer then he would he took his 
silly little gold clock and went to the bar and was having a whiskey on his own whilst watching the news or whatever. And she turned up at the bar and said, you don't remember me. And that's where they got reacquainted. Then she was saying about how she's looking for this dial of destiny. And he so, was like, oh, yeah, basically, fuck it. I've got it. Come wait a minute. Me. One thing you guys forgot to mention is what happened to Marion Ravenwood in, in this? Is she not in uh, it? Right, okay. Ma him and Marion are on the verge. Of, well, they're getting divorced because Mutz yeah. clearly died in Vietnam. You oh, that's the, oh, that. You see the there. American Triangle flag. You see a picture of Mutt that, next sitting in his house. That is the that made the movie. That just gave it so many more points, knowing that Shia LaBeouf got blown away by some commie. Yeah, and it's and it's no more. He is well, no, no longer hang part on, of hang on. When was when was the Vietnam War? It, it was in Vietnam. When was about? the Vietnam War? No, when years? Oh, years. 60, no, when? No, where? You idiot! Uh, Ameri Americans' Ameri involvement was from, officially from sixty-five to seventy-three. The war ended yeah, okay. ended in nineteen seventy-five. Oh, okay, okay. But, but thanks with to it, again when when but <laughs> but with it again this kind of annoyed me because it's kind of like um, what happened to Mudge? Oh, he died. And that was it. It was literally not even 30 seconds. It was just, oh, yeah, he died. Well, um, you know, if, yeah, if, if, wait a minute. If Mutt was your son, would you really give a shit if he died in Vietnam? Bro? I mean, <laughs> well, apparently it broke it broke Indy and Marion up, and that's why they were filing for divorce. Or she was divided, filing for divorce. Yeah, it's actually it's Mutt's death and Marion's div his divorce. It's actually addressed later on in the film. It's not just sort of poo-pooed and pushed to one side. It's actually addressed later on. I felt it was a bit poo pooed because it was kind of just oh they're getting divorced because Mutt died, well, and that was kind of it. <laughs> yeah, but he, did, he, he explained he explained that he was unable to to mend Marion. He, he he said he wasn't be he wasn't able to 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 heal to heal her and, and give her the comfort that she needed, which is why they they were getting a divorce. Hang on, so just I think to Mutt's, something. Mutt's death must have been very Mutt's death must have been very recent within this film timeline. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's in 69, I mean, so there's only in the, I mean, they've yeah, only been four years, so, like. Yeah, because Indy does, like, cause Helena says, what would you do if you could travel back in time? And he said, I would, I would convince my son not to sign up and enlist. Yeah. Wait a minute, and don't I, tell me, don't tell me he goes back in time and saves Mutt. No, 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 no. no. And, um, and he says, he says, what, she says, well, what would you say to him? He says that you die in the war and I'm unable to help your mum come to terms with her grief and it ruins our marriage. And I was like, oh, that's... I thought it was really well handled, if I'm honest. Yeah. That I, like I it. felt it was glossed over. That, that's oh, just it's, a, it's an action movie about a dude that... I don't think Indiana Jones movies are the place to handle the grief of a mother and father from the death of a son in the no, Vietnam War. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of just like a throwaway comment, though. It was just kind of like... I mean, there was more attention drawn to um, Antonio Banderas than there was to Mutt, as far as I was concerned. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, yeah, again, we'll no one likes that. Mutt, so fuck him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, after swinging through the jungle, yeah, uh, Mutt's going to ride out. Um, yeah, and uh, Magic, no, Mad, Mads Mikkelsen doesn't die in Vietnam, comes back to it was It was Mutt we were talking about, Shay Labou from um, <laughs> Crystal Skull. No, Mads, Mik <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen is still alive and was not old yeah, enough still... to have served in Vietnam, and he was not he's... even an American citizen to begin with, so he's safe. He's worry. not. He's not done a Julian Sands. You're all right. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't anyway. know. Uh, not, uh, we don't know his uh, vaccination status, though. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> when he's when he's alive and breathing, so he yeah, probably yeah. isn't vaccinated. Yeah. So um, we meet up with Salah who, again, kind of just, like, stumbles across Indy by the, the scene of it. Indy's about to be outed because apparently he's wanted for murder because of what took place in the chase scene previously. In, and this guy sort of, Indiana Jones um, Indy. Okay. Yeah. And so the, this guy sort of sees him and goes, hey, you look like the guy on TV. And he goes, hey, this is the guy, this is the guy. And then Salah punches this guy in the face. But Salah is looking like walking bones. I mean, he is, he yeah. is like, proper old. He's got... He's, 
Who is that? The actor. The, who's the, the Arab um, guy from the first Oh, three? John, John Reese davis Oh, yeah. oh yeah. He he does look like he fucking death wound over these days, do not he? Yeah, but he's he suffered from the problem where he's always been fat. He gets to the old age, he's like, I'm going to go, like Timothy Spall, I'm going to go on a yeah. massive diet. And basically, it doesn't make you look better. It, it makes you look like you have AIDS. It does. Your does, skin it, yeah. falls off you. Yeah, fucking, you know, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's for 70 years. Stay fat. You look better for it. Yeah, they do, That's actually. That's what I'm fucking planning they, anyway. They... <laughs> <laughs> that's what I plan to do. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Same here. Same here. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. I don't want to look terrible when I get old. What are you crazy? <laughs> um. Anyway, he finds that Helena has gone to Tangiers to sell this half of this um thing because she just wants the money for it. So Indy jumps on a plane and goes to Tangiers and goes to a bar and finds her straight away. Obviously, because you know Tangiers is a, a tiny, tiny place. Um, well, the, the the bar and the the auction is actually mentioned. All right, um, Sorry, he's really so, he's really he's really looking for reasons to not like this movie, <laughs> any man. No, no, no. Like I say, it might have been mentioned. I just uh, it, it, it must have skipped me. But you, maybe you, you should, when he, maybe you should leave watching movies to us, the professionals. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got the bladder the size of a pea, uh, like a peanut, all right? So I, I was going for a pea again. No, That's what, so, that's what she said. <laughs> she, When he gets there, she he then tries to sort of say, right, why are you trying? There's a private auction going on for this thing of Archimedes, his dial of Archimedes. And he sort of interjects saying, actually, that belongs to me. And then Mads Middleton, again, turns up at exactly the same moment and says actually it belongs to me and again this was one of those moments where quite often everybody just seems to meet up at the same place as if by magic yeah but that's just classic indiana that happened yeah, in Raiders yeah. of the lost ark uh yeah, the last yeah. crusade in particular every time indy got in in the raiders of the lost ark every time indy got got close to the ark of the covenant or even at the beginning with the giant ball when he had that little gold fucking head thing that French yeah. geezer always appeared like 30 seconds after he got it. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I wouldn't say it was 30 seconds. That He could have turned oh, up a long... Oh, my God. Actually, no, no, no. Matthew, it wasn't 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that uh, Indy, when Indy gets to that place before he goes in, he's in there for a good 10 minutes. So that guy could have turned up at any time. And he, he turned up, Indy turned up with a couple of other guys who knew where he was. So they could have gone to get the French guy and, and whatnot. Anyway, uh, now Phil, Phil's looking at this going, I want to dial a destiny so I can go back in time and not invite Sean. <laughs> Do you want me to let, will you be more, would you be more comfortable if I leave Phil? Do you want me to go, buddy? No, I, I can't wait for you to watch it, Sean, and then give me your opinion. So, <laughs> then we'll Jesus, see who's right. Jesus, that, that sounded in hostile fact, as hell, didn't it? <laughs> In fact, I would pay good money to take you to the cinema and just sit there. I wouldn't watch the film. I'd just watch your face <laughs> all the way through. <laughs> oh, swanky. <laughs> I'll say sure that again. We got, to, we got thrown out last time. <laughs> watch anyway. this bit, Sean. Tell me you're hoping. <laughs> then there is a tuk-tuk r- race a around. A what? A tuk-tuk. What? You know, a tuk-tuk, one of those little... Um, little cars. Uh, well, it's like a little moped with three wheels, but it's got a cover on it. You know, you see people driving around in um, oh, be like a, uh, yeah, Marrakesh uh, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. like those ones you rode in when you went on your sex tourism to Thailand. There yeah, you go. yeah, yeah like one of those, one That's of those. Exactly yeah. It. Um, take take me to a good place with lady boys. Um, <laughs> yeah. So one of, the, but then again, this sequence again was very one night just in sort Bangkok of, makes the hard man humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, this was it was quite a generic r- race around the city, and again, everybody just sort of, a, 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 sort of again met met up sort of near the end. Yeah, but Matt had, I, Matt had I, nicked the Dial of Destiny. He'd nicked yeah. it, so that was chasing to get it back. Dead air. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments there. No, I'm just reading the comments there. Sorry. Um, that's why that that's why that chase enthused because yeah. Mads had nicked it. They was trying to get it. Helena there's, wanted there's it whole... because she wanted to sell it for money. Indiana want, Jones wanted it because he, he believed it belonged in the museum or maybe even needed destroying. So but... you've got the, you've got a little dynamic between Helena and Indiana arguing about why they should get it back as well as Mads 
taking it because obviously he wants to use it to go back in time to stop the Nazis from losing the war. So he's the good guy of the movie. So team, team mates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it then turns out that uh, Helena works out that, or her dad found out that there is a sunken Roman galley ship off the coast of Greece, I think it was, which is where probably the other half of this Dial of Destiny is, or at least a map to lead to it, a MacGuffin, if you like. Um, and so then they go, again, this was this was one of those things that just annoyed me. They go to Greece because Indy's got a good friend there who is Antonio Banderas. And it's, this is literally, it's, it, they turn up at the boat and go, look, it's Antonio Banderas. They go, hooray, let's go. And that was it. <laughs> so it was just kind of like... You know, no introduction to him or anything else. He's just an old mate of Indies. Let's go. <laughs> and, yeah, but I don't, so, I don't mind that because, it, again, yeah, it's just it, it Indiana happened. Jones. It's all it coincidences happened. and it happens in fucking every, fly flying around me. It happens in every movie. Guys pop up that you've never heard a fucking thing about in any previous movie. <laughs> yeah. You That is, out of all of your complaints, that is, honestly, that's the most, like, that's the worst. Anyway. There's no basis on that. that I'm sorry. that I can... I can kind of like give you a lot of, but that one's a little retarded, bro. Anyway, okay, right. So they, um, Antonio Banderas, a guy in a red shirt, Helena and Indy go down to this <coughs> sub to, or go down in, in, in diving gear to find the rest of this MacGuffin that's in this ship. Right. You can't tell me the scene with the eels was good. No, it wasn't. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't good. I mean, Indiana Jones obviously has got a problem with snakes, and there was a little comment before about eels are like water snakes. So he was guys, gonna panic. It wasn't good, but guys, Big Gator missed the start of the show and is requesting us if we start over. So if you don't, okay, no worries. This, 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 Hello no. and welcome to the Outpost Frequencies. <laughs> Today we're talking uh, about. <laughs> hold, hold on, I just want to address something in the comments. Bionic Bigfoot. He's Aggie from Manchester. You can't quite play that. <laughs> Manchester. Watch it, watch, it, watch, watch Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, my friend. And there I, you go. That's where I'm from. I thought you were from Wisconsin. Ah, you. <laughs> <Jim>. <laughs> sure. they, find, they find the MacGuffin and then go back up to the boat. And then Mads Mickelson saying, I can't read what's written on this tablet or whatever it is, this MacGuffin that they find. So... Uh, Indy says he's not going to read it, so they just shoot Antonio Banderas dead. Yes. <laughs> nice. Well, it, it, it's, it's literally, hello, I am Antonio Banderas. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> well, yeah, it he was, shoots it because Indy says, I'm, I'm not reading that. And, and so they. No, but they again, it was just. As an incentive, and then she turns around and goes, I'll read it for 100 grand. Like or money. Yeah. It. Yeah, Mads gives her a bag of diamonds. She's like, yeah, fuck it, then I'll read it. So, again, it showed her her lack of morals, that she was willing just to do anything for the money. However, she was double-crossing so, them. Yeah. So, wow, wow. She, yeah. So, it, that she likes a stick of dynamite, which ends up sort of blowing up part of the ship, I suppose. But her and Indy and... Oh, yeah, well, we forgot about Monkey Boy. I shouldn't call him Monkey Boy, should I? What's his name? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Helen basically, ma- Helen's got a Teddy, 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 Teddy. 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 She's yeah, got a he's, he's supposed to be a short round. Her but... version of short round. He's, he's all right, does the bit. Um. Anyway, they escape. And so Mads Mickelson watches them drive off on the boat. And, and he literally goes... But they're yeah, in the middle of the ocean, shit. right? There was, was no shit. reference at all. And he's going, oh, they're going west. And then he ends up knowing exactly where they're going. Well, it's, it's, to be fair, Phil, it's a little bit worse than that because he's looking for his binoculars. He goes, they've turned left. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and you know, I just went, what the fuck? So I'll give you that bit. That was a little bit. That was a little bit. And they end up in, I want to say, was it Sicily? No. Yeah, yes, no, it was Sicily, yes, wasn't it? Yeah, it they end up in Sicily, Sicily yeah. and they end up in a cave where apparently uh, Archimedes is buried with the second half of the Dial of Destiny. Uh, they they <laughs> oh, get the, there. The MacGuffin gives them, the MacGuffin yeah. gives them in, in his code, I can't remember the name of it, but he gives them a code yeah. of, 
where I where I was laid to rest and, and a few codes. So they in yeah. Indiana Jones style, they decipher it and go, it's That was nice. Like the last crusade. It's like, well, okay, there's yeah. the, the crescent in the ground, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. blah. So, yeah. That like I say, that was that was quite nice. That there was kind of like a bit of investigative archaeology going on. That was, yes. that was quite good. They find but again, this kind of annoyed me. They find the tomb, which apparently nobody else has found in those tunnels. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's basically, the caves have uh, tours every day. <laughs> and yeah. yet they happen to find this this buried tomb. And it was kind of like, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I, suppose, I suppose there is that room with the methane. Uh, I did forget that. So there is that. That may explain it. Yeah, but I... I agree with what you're saying. It was a bit like, well, this has always been there, but to defend it a little bit, and I can't actually believe I'm defending this film, even though I really enjoyed it. No, everyone thought the Dial of Destiny was either a myth or had been lost. And they not only had it, but they had the deciphering code because the entrance to this secret little bit was high up, wasn't it? It wasn't on the ground. It was high up. It was a little... Yeah, no, that's, true. that's fair enough. No, so, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's fair so enough. So they were little bits. Um, anyway, they find it. And, of course, Mads Mikkelsen turns up straight afterwards, obviously, uh, you know, because they're all in the same room together. Uh, and then um, there's a gun sh- fight, and then Indy gets shot in the shoulder, but quite close to his heart, which, if he was an extra, would have killed him instantly. <laughs> but, yeah, <he's> <laughs> obviously, it's, and I kind of... I kind of don't understand why Mids Mackelson's character then takes Indy along, uh, why he just didn't leave him. Because he wants to prove to him that he prove was the point. right about... Yeah, prove the point. If I can go back a little bit, which was my other second gripe, was after the tuk-tuk race through the streets, Mads and his team had fucked off and had like a ha- an hour's head start, and Indy and Helena nicked a car... And they got to this location within about five minutes. But then Mads and his team had already had about an hour's head start, didn't turn up until sundown. And you're like, okay. Dude, they they stopped off for pizza, obviously. (laughs) (laughs) Fine (laughs) suits. Yeah. Um, And so Indy gets shot. So they all end up basically on a plane. Uh, and they're gonna. What happens is, is they find that this style of destiny, it it shows you where there are kind of rips in time and Stop. space. Gone, gone. Stop. You forgot to mention they find Artemis's body or skeleton, yeah. and he's got the other half of the dial of destiny. Oh, sorry, yes, and, and also Artemis a watch is wearing a wrist watch. So yeah. they piece it together. Mads Mickelson and his team finally turn up uh, and basically steal it. Then they jump on an aeroplane and it turns out that there's rifts in time and this dial can locate these rifts in time throughout the planet. And you if see, you basically the, get into it. The, you're the in rifts the in time, unfortunately, reminded me of the map from Time Bandits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that it's kind of like we know where the holes are going to appear so we can go anywhere we want. <laughs> That again, that kind of just it, as soon as that happened, I thought, oh, so it's like the map from Time Bandits, which then it kind of you know sort of threw me off a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but so Mads's, they, Mads's plan is to go back to before to go back the to start of the war in 1939. 39. Yeah. Fuck Hitler off out of it because he knows Hitler hasn't quite got what it takes to carry the war through. Get rid of Hitler and he take over. As the and actually win the war because they know he knows the what the mistakes the German made. Yeah, and save us all from Pride Month. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the whole premise of the story. Uh, Ultimately, the, the story the story the is about Mads Mickelson. This is right. <laughs> no, 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 Mads Mickelson's just doesn't no, like rainbow flags. That's what it is. <laughs> we can't go back in time. We, who will teach the kids about drag time story yeah. hour? <laughs> so what, what happens is, is Mads is sitting on the plane with Indiana Jones and goes, I've been to the future, I've been to 2023, and you've got <laughs> naked homosexual men showing their bum holes and twerking in front of young children and politicians defending it. 
And I want to go back in time to stop it. And Indiana Jones is like, <laughs> fuck it, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> let's go right now. What, what can I do to help? <laughs> anyway, we're getting off point. Let's get back to the story. So, major massive spoilers here about the ending. So, they're on a plane. Uh, as they're taking off, Helena gets on a motorbike and chases the plane as it's taking off obviously, because, again, that's a real thing you can do. And she manages to get on the plane from the motorbike as it takes off. But it's okay, because Teddy, the, what, 15-year-old, knows yeah. how to fly because of uh, because somebody told him. So he gets in a plane and chases them. Well, again, it was... <laughs> but this was hinted to back at the bit where she was doing the auction. I know. Selfie, I know. Where he was, I know. He had like little fake dials set up and he had pilots and that. And he was like, so if I do this. And so it was hinted at that he was a bit of a, he wants to be a pilot in his future. So again. And apparently, listen, if you just, if you just play with, if you play with bits of paper and a joystick, apparently you can't fly, uh, which yeah, is great. Exactly. Well, you can't. I, have, well, I understand one, the, I understand we know the thoughts of it, but it's Indiana can't, Jones. You apparently can't uh, steer a submarine with that either. <laughs> <laughs> <Hi-ya>! <laughs> anyway, Ow. so as they're going up in the air, Mads sets this dial of destiny to know that if he flies into this wormhole or, or glitch and whatever you want to call it, he can go back to 1939. As he's doing it, Indy says... No, because the map that Archimedes made was made 2,000 years ago, and so it's the wrong settings, and it won't take you back to 1939. As they try to then abort, because Mad realises this is true, they go back in time to, I'm going to say, like 200 AD, I think it was, where there is a Roman battle. No, I think it was before that. I think it was 2026 AD. Okay. Um. But they end up in, uh, going back to Greece, uh, back in time with the Romans attacking uh, a, a Greece, a Grecian city or a Sicilian city, wherever they were. And with this, again, this really annoyed me. You're looking down on all of these boats and they're flinging flaming missiles at each other and everything else. So where does the plane go? As low as it possibly can <laughs> to get hit by the missiles and arrows that are flying around. This You're in a plane. This, wait a minute, wait a minute, You're missing wait a minute, wait a it. They, they, all their instruments were fucked going through the time track, so they was actually spiraling still... down. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's but they've got the power back. In... <laughs> Listen, no, but their, in, their engines were fired. The engines were fired. That's why it, it left a trail is... of smoke. And that's why, hold on, Sean, that's why they left a trail of smoke behind. And the, and the Romans and the Greek were calling them dragons because they could see the fire and the smoke. And they obviously have no idea what an airplane. So they couldn't get back up. Yes, they could. They, were, they could. they got the engine started again. This is a very common. No, they didn't. This is a very common Hollywood cliche, though. Like, think, like, think of all the times, like they're they're fleeing in, or they're like a plane or helicopter is going through a city and they're being chased, and, and it's like, yeah. why don't you just go up? Go up, but, yeah. yeah. And they yeah. never. It's, this is. <laughs> This is not a problem to this movie. This is a very, you know, very common trope for all Hollywood movies. Yeah, the other thing that got the, me, the, and, they, and the go on. The, the plane is fucked. The engines are on fire. There's smoke pissing out of the back of it. And it's been harpooned a couple of times as well from the Roman ships because they think it's a dragon. Anyway, so Sean, Sean will like this bit. The other thing I didn't get was the German guy who decided to just start shooting everybody from the plane, all the Romans. He was the, he was the Texan. <laughs> yeah, but wants, it was... wants to go was, back and be a Nazi. He's basically sure. Yeah, He's literally me. I, I got the impression that it was very much, that would have been a scene out of Vietnam where some gun-happy American is just shooting the gooks for the sake of it. <laughs> you know, yeah, but he just whoa, gets on the gun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy with the ethnic slur. Sorry, Christ. sorry, Americans. Sorry, American <laughs> gung ho. <laughs> but that he's was, the same that wasn't guy. The one, that wasn't the one I meant, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> but, but Phil, he was the same guy that bl- the black chick called a oh, I suppose, uh, trigger yeah. happy cracker. So he was clearly. Sorry, Sean, it just seemed like a point. It's, a, 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 it's it was a, clearly a typical American who just fired first and asked questions later. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that you didn't use the hard R at the end of cracker, Matthew. That really cracker. 
crack of. <laughs> um, and so basically the plane goes down. Archimedes finds the plane, finds Mads's watch and this dial of destiny that he was currently working on. But obviously this one's from the future. Indy and uh, what's her face? Helena. Helena <laughs> have parachuted out of the plane by this time. They're fine. Uh, so that's all okay. Uh, well, they, oh, they, they, go back. She went to rescue Indy and fucked up, so he ended up rescuing her. So what about the bullet wound in his shoulder this entire time? Well, he's slowly that. dying. I, forget he's that. No, forget that. Forget that. That doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a flesh wound to a major character. He's fine, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so basically, he is saying that he wants to stay there and just die because it's kind of all... This is everything he's read about, but he's now living in living in history. She's saying... No, um, you've got you've got to come back to the future, I suppose. <laughs> you gotta get back in. Marty! Uh, got, Marty, 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 Marty. And again, one of those things that mildly annoyed me about this was Teddy is still in this other plane. Apparently, the pilot of the plane was in the back asleep. He's now woken up and flying yeah, the plane. Shit. And shit. and then they land just where Indy is because obviously. Sicily in 20 AD was known for its runways <laughs> where a plane could quite happily land and take off again <laughs> without any issues. Um, so she keeps saying, no, you've got to come back with me. Indy's saying, no, I want to stay here. So she punches Indy out. It Hold goes on. to black. He oh, says he wants to stay because his son's dead. He's getting divorced. He's basically retired. And he's like, what the fuck am I going back for? You know, why am I going to go back back to the future when yeah. there's nothing for Marty, me? Marty, Marty. Indy! <laughs> <laughs> I want to um, stay here and sleep with my mom. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I am not reading a teleprompter. If I was reading a teleprompter, it would be like this. And so Mads Mickelson went to the other... Because I, I'm my terrible reading. I'm he, making one of those go along. He can't I even can't read. read. Yeah. Um... So anyway, it cuts to black. Then they wake up back in 1969. Yep. Indy's now obviously healed because, like I say, flesh wound, near the heart, flesh wound. Well, he's all bandaged um, up, to be fair. But he's, he's all... An extra would have died with that. Yeah, um, it's, not called, it's not called Extras and the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> Indiana Jones. No, no, it's called Helena, Helena Shaw and the Dial of Destiny is what it's called. Um <laughs> So she says, basically, oh, I'm glad I saved you. He said he's got nothing for her. Then Marion turns up, uh, who does is she, looking does she awful. Have a, does she have a machine gun? No. No. Um, but she was looking rough. Um, yeah, but she's as old as shit. She's got to be about 80, isn't she? I know, but just I like look D-Rare up, or something. Fucking, <laughs> fucking <D-Rare>. <laughs> Um, and then they have a moment, reminiscent, which is like a flashback to uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where she says about it hurting, and where does it that doesn't hurt? Oh, it doesn't hurt here, and he kisses her elbow, and then it kind of pans away. Um, Helena and Salah and the kids have like gone outside for an ice cream, and then it cuts to, and I'm sorry, this I hated this. It cuts to Indy's uh, outside of Indy's flat with his hat hanging up on a on a clothesline. And it goes down to a black circle on the hat. Black sun. Black sun. No, no like a, you, know, you know where the screen zooms. The whole screen goes oh, dark, oh, like oh. a Looney Tunes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, just at the last second, somebody grabs the hat, and then it Indy cuts. Grabs the hat. Indy grabs the hat. No, it was probably Helena. She's taking. No, she. Up. You just see her walking across. The I, know, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. But. But. When Marion turns up, and she spe- she went, uh, Helen, she tells me you're back. Are you back? In other words, have you got that fight back in your? Have you got that fire back in your, in your gut? And he was like, Yeah, well, I'm back. And then Helena, uh, the Arab, Salah. Know his name, Salah, Salah. They all go out and leave him some time, and then you see them having a little, a little kiss and a cut. Which actually, that was a really nice thing because she says to him. Are you hurting? He went, Yeah, I'm hurting. She went, and he says to her, How about you? Because obviously, referencing the death of Mutt. And she says, It hurts everywhere. And he, and he says, Where? And she went, It hurts here. I said is, that while well, she was looking that up. You didn't explain oh. it as clearly as he did, though. Go ahead. Well, he said he kissed her over. 
Oh, no, Christ, the great the race of the Lost Ark, I said oinoid, that. Oinoid, it's oinoid. throwback. So I thought that was a really nice touch. So then it pans out to see Helena and Salah and the kids going off to get ice creams. And it does this little Looney Tunes zoom into the hat on a clothes peg. It doesn't do the music, by the way. It doesn't do the music. And then you just see a hand of the chat and the do you think that people in the audience would get annoyed if I go <laughs> in the theater? <laughs> Do it. No. Oh, um, and then it kind of cut and you know, Jane, directed by James Mangold, and that was it. And to me, like I say, I I felt entertained by it, but there are lots of problems with it. And it's just to me, what annoyed me is, and I said this in the review that's going to go up on last movie app post later. Um, that it seemed like the script had been passed around so many times by so many different people that it just, it didn't gel as well as it should have done. And when you're working on a movie like this, I'm sorry, you've got to pay attention to the little details. I've always said that. I I couldn't disagree more, my friend. I, I thought it was a great Indiana Jones caper as a throwback to the original three. And I was thoroughly also from this very first second to the very last minute. I thought it was great. <clears throat> I'm going to go see it based on your recommendation, Matthew. Listen, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, Ren is going to go and see it tomorrow. Yoda's been mentioned about he's going to go and see it and, and, and sort of be the uh, the in between. Oh, but, he'll uh, he'll love it because you know. Well, Yoda Dis- like the Di- Flash. Di- you know, it's Disney. And excuse and, me, you like you like Man of Steel, so you can shut up. <laughs> Wow. Was a fucking <laughs> there you go, Sean. <laughs> uh, you know. Anyway. No, go and see it. The, the problem is... I mean, listen, I didn't think that Crystal School is bad as everybody else thinks, so I'm very likely am to enjoy this. Now that I know that it's not woke trash. It's not woke. <laughs> I'm probably... I mean, I... Uh. I will probably at least rate it probably, you know, like Matt three and a half or something, because if it's not, you know, woke and it's the trailer made it look like it's going to be woke, you know, well, white man what, bad. Uh, this is know. what I will say, Sean. If I was Lucasfilm, the first thing I would do, because this film is getting a lot of negative press for all the right reasons with Kathleen Kennedy and, yeah. And Kurt said about going back in time to when Kathleen Kennedy was burned and thrown in a volcano. Very fine. Um, <laughs> I the first thing I would do if I was Lucasfilm is I would fire the entire marketing department for this film and the people that edited that trailer together. Yeah, they made it look like I it's, looked at it, yeah, and it looked like fucking shit with comments about that's capitalism. Yeah, I mean the that woke, was still the in there. This was like my there was hardly any wokeness in it, and I thought it was quite evenly balanced. And see, listen, you say that people are going to agree with me, that. people are going to disagree with me, but no, I the I way, liked it. It was like an Indiana Jones film. Well, you say that though. I thought that Phoebe Waller Bridge, like I say, took too much of the main focus, and she was too much of a Mary Sue, and so no, I, I felt the woke was quite cool. high. I thought she basically got put in her place several times during the movie. And she she basically come out of it as someone who had no morals or no comprehension of her repercussions of her actions. And Indiana Jones saved her more than once and kept her quite grounded. In fact, she turned it around at the end. I thought it was a bit of a... Do you know, I, really, I don't understand why people hate her anyway, because I, I enjoyed Fleabag. I thought it was a good show. Never what? seen it. What was it? But it's called Fleabag. I think it's called really something. Right it's called something different in America. Um, Never it's called it. something different. No, 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 no. You have, but it's in America. It's called. Hang on a minute. I'll find it here. It's called in America. Oh, don't say it on here. I don't know. It's called something else. It's not called Fleabag. Um, I'm sure it. you would hate it, but it, it, it's enjoyable. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm, I mean, I, I'm going to go see it. Probably go see it Friday. So. And can I just Coming say, you to... said he didn't like the flash. He said it sucked a bit lesser than a fall. Sounds like my wife. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I thought James Mangold's direction was good, but it was nowhere near as good as Spielberg on one of his best days. Is the Spielberg problem. is over. He's done. Stop living in the no, past. No, 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 He's... no. I'm talking no. about. I'm talking he, about the original yeah. Raiders and stuff. Oh yeah, Raiders no, at the no, peak of his career. Yeah. Uh, nobody could. I mean, you know, 
Mangold had big shoes to fill. And ultimately, there was no, I don't want to say magic spark, but I mean, in Raiders, you know, there is that just little bits of hints of magic all the way through those movies that just make them amazing. And this just didn't have that spark. You know, you're just too old and jaded and jaundiced. Jaundiced? What's that got to do with it? You know, Listen, next you'll be next you'll be you, having a go. My rectal fever. <laughs> have you uh, have you considered just stopping watching movies, Phil? Well, to be for sure, maybe I, I you, should. You've got to see it yet, Sean. You might look at it and go, "Oh, fucking hell! What's what, what's Matt going on about?" But it's I, possible. It would be, I genuinely felt like it was like a, a a good old fashioned Indiana Jones film by today's standards. Whether that's because I went in there thinking it was going to be terrible and it wasn't as bad as I thought, but. I have to admit, I was entertained from start to finish. There wasn't a point during that film I sat there and went, eh. Honestly, is it, is it any time spent with Indiana Jones, though, kind of enjoyable? Like, even if you throw out the... No matter how stupid the story might be or plot holes, getting to, like, spend more time with the character Indiana Jones is kind of, you know, it's kind of worth your... It's kind of worth what you pay, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Sure. I... I like I say, I don't know whether I can. Okay, I have just watched the previous four, and even though I know well. them, and, and, and okay, like I say, I'm I'm being, you know, it, it's difficult to criticise Raiders of the Lost Yes, there are places in there where I do go mm, really, and or whatever, but with it, it, they are difficult to fault because they are so exceedingly well made. Yeah, but Whereas with it's, this, it's cinema, it's escapism. It's just yeah. Sometimes no, 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 you, but you can switch my brain off and just enjoy it. Let people yeah. enjoy things, feel. No, <laughs> nobody's going to enjoy everything. No. Everybody's going to be miserable, like me. <laughs> <laughs> if only no. everybody could get a wife like mine, but, I'd be happy. No. <laughs> but seriously, seriously though, like Indiana Jones is like a comforting thing, right? You you go into it, it's like there's an ambiance, there's an aesthetic. There, yeah. You know, it's like putting on, you know, your favorite pair of underwear that your grandma used to wear. And <laughs> it's just like, it's nice to be sure, in that you universe. you said you'd never say that. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, Matthew? Yeah. No, no, no. I, yeah, no, I, I, get, was, I get it. It was Jake. My son's just walked in. Jake, what, out of five stars, what would you give Dial of Destiny? I'd be generous. Give it a four. Uh, Jake's giving it a four. That's bad parenting, Matt. Well, I told you he warned me before. <laughs> he warned me beforehand. I mean, don't be sitting there swearing and rolling your eyes and moaning in front of everyone <laughs> in the cinema. He knows you well, don't he? He does know you yeah. well. So, but he looked at me at the end of it with like fear in his eyes and went, "What did you think?" I was like, "Actually, I really enjoyed it." And he was like, "Fucking hell, I really." Yeah, I it is low three and a half to a four. Yeah, low four, but low four, low four. I mean, coming home from the cinema, I did feel like I had been entertained, but it still had it did still you, had its all issues. Right, so, bottom, all right. So, did, were you bored? No. A little bit. The, oh, I found there was a couple of plots where there was a couple of bits where there was plot exposition, and I had to look at my watch just to see what the time was. Really? Really? Yeah, a couple of times. What times were they? Uh, I must admit, on the boat, the opening, the, o- the opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> when you sit there for an hour waiting for an end credit scene, and realize it won't. In, hang on a minute, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I didn't come here to read. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, like I say, there were just a couple of times the bits when the tuk tuk broke down, and they're all just having that conversation and everything else. Again, it just didn't add much to it. You know, so there were a couple of times where it just slowed down a bit. A bit too much for me. What was the runtime? Um, What's the runtime on that movie? <clears throat> um, I'll tell you because it's right in front of me. It is. Got oh, that's Phoebe Waller Bridge. It? it is uh, two thirty-four. Two hours thirty-four minutes. Two so hours. A lot of. How long? Like two hours thirty. I could have quite happy. Two and a half story. hours. That's a, that's pretty long. Yeah, it's pretty. Hold on. The entire ca- Cali Kaku. The entire series of Indiana Jones was totally overrated. The first movie was a fluke, and then it was a bogus. Who, it, who the fuck? Uh, banned. You carry on talking. I'm going to go and have a piss out of fury while you carry on talking about that. 
Who? No, sorry. The the first three Indiana Jones movies are as close to perfection as you can possibly get. Yeah. It, Ra- Raiders of the, Raiders of the Lost Ark is is literally the perfect movie. It is it's, a perfect film. You can't fault it. The idea of an archaeologist who carries a whip and a pistol around while wearing a fedora is absurd. Just think about it. No, that, of course that, he, that that is a shit take. That's got to be a troll. Because he's wearing a fedora. Oh my god! Like a, oh my god! Somebody in the 1940s is wearing a fedora. I'm, That's I'm, this is just unbelievable. This uh, is just this would, is incredible. Nobody would. <laughs> nobody would do that. Nobody would ever do that. Anyway, um, like I say, it will be interesting to see what you think of it and what Yoda thinks of it. So you can join us again on Sunday for the, or excuse me, for the other live stream where we will be talking about this too. Um, but with it, like I say, I did feel entertained, but it had a lot of problems and a lot of plot holes, which were quite glaring, I thought. Well, I thought... It was good fun, and I liked it from start to finish, and I was pleasantly surprised. And I think, I know Doomcock gets a lot of shit, and I've always defended him to some degree, but I've got to be honest now, after listening to what he's been ranting on about for the last year, he's full of shit. Do you know what? I Yeah, I've stopped listening to Doomcock, because what I don't like about him is he keeps saying Kathleen Kennedy's going to be fired any day now. And he's I, been saying and that I, for the last six years. And I've been telling you guys for at least a year that she's not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and also, he is a dog with a bone, and he won't have his mind changed, and I disagree with that. Yeah, if, somebody, if, somebody comes, yeah. if somebody comes to me and sort of makes a, a compelling argument about a film and it makes me re-look at it, I'm, I'm fine with changing my mind. He is just, you know, all well, Star Trek is crap, and if you're watching it, you're, you know... Supporting well, it's criminals like, and Nazis. Yeah, it's um, it's it's like Josh was saying on the radio drum uh, re- reunion thing. Uh, you know, guys like him, they just it's outrage bait. You know, they just get on yeah. there and it's the same old it shit every outrage. time. It it's all the only, I mean, the only the only problem with this film is the fact that if word gets out and I'm right, and it's actually better. And, and again, I'll hold my hand over it. If it's Sean, if you see it and Yoda sees it. And Rene sees it, and Stark sees it, because I know Stark's watching tonight. If, if they see it and go, Matt, what the fuck are you talking about? I'll go, fine, you know, whatever. But I think... Oh, so you just came and tried right, over. Brilliant. If, 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 if I'm right and a lot of people say it's not as bad as they say it is, then I think, unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's, it's just uh, prolonged well, Kennedy's take at Lucasfilm. Even with Phil's problems with it, I don't see anything that Phil said that he found to be... Not that you were like shitting on it, Phil, but you know your no, the, no, no. the issues you had. It, those issues, as you describe them, I'm I'm thinking to myself like that. I don't. That's not a problem for me. Like none of that would turn me off. You know. I uh, mean, this, with it, I've just now I've, what, for everybody in the audience t- t- for some um, perspective here. I'm also a guy that watches movies with names like Rape Squad. So. <laughs> <laughs> If you look through our YouTube channel, you can see that myself and Sean have enjoyed some uh, excellent. Uh, um, what, what's the word? Risque movie, shall we say? I would say uh, iconoclastic. I prefer iconoclastic. <laughs> I've just quickly looked on um, the IMDb at the moment, and it it's got a meta score of 58, which is okay. very down the middle. Um, on the Rotten Tomatoes, it still hasn't got an audience score at the moment, but. It's sitting with a tomato meter of the um, critics of 66. Well, I mean, okay. that's usually a good sign, though. If the critics aren't that crazy about it, then that usually means it's probably – it wasn't, I, woken, yeah. it wasn't woke enough for the, you know, the cat to, to well, you, you know. Interesting I mean, with it, why though, is it not an audience score? Yeah, uh, the, that's what I just looked up because it's just obviously not on there yet. It is weird, though, that – the the score it, it, it's again one of those films which is just very diverse that you are going to get people who love it and you are going to get people who just dislike it and for me like i say two stars was middle of the road it wasn't atrocious it wasn't amazing it was just somewhere in the middle of the road i didn't think it was amazing but i thought it was great fun and i I'll be honest, and I, I don't know it's because we've we've become accustomed to utter shit in cinema these days. Yeah. But I 
I don't know what else you'd want in a movie, if I'm honest. It's it's Boobs. got guns, it's got fighting, it's got shit, it's got the classic, probably one of the greatest sound effects of all time with Indiana Jones punching. Yeah, those it's are different. Sh- That's always been like a stellar thing for that film. Is Do like you know a- what I mean? Yeah. It's got, yeah. It's got yeah. slapstick humour, it's got heart, it's got adventure. Oh, and the CGI, you know, some of it leaves a leak. Uh, leaves a bit to the side. Yeah, that's the word. Sorry, I've had four pints. Um, but <laughs> apart from that, you know, I don't know what else you want from a film. I really it, don't. It, it, was just, I, it was solid entertainment. I, it kind of sounds like I will have more fun watching that than John Wick 4, to be honest with you. John Wick 4. The John Wick, film John Wick 4 was a, you know, like at first I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. But the more I've thought about it, I was like, man, that was a fucking slog, man. That's Probably, the yeah. thing I found. Do you know what? And then the, apparently the director has said there is a director's cut, and I'm thinking, there's no way I'm sitting through that. Bloody yeah, I would, I would you know? <laughs> There's no <laughs> way too long. Yeah, I saw the first John Wick. The other was I saw John Wick two copy and paste. I got ten minutes into John Wick three. Can I just go to mention some of the comments on the on on the last movie outpost in our discuss? You can do whatever you want, Matt. Well, get my dick no, out. Gigantic Kahuna no, said. Cool. There is no old indie meeting young indie. No, none at no. all. I know there were reshoots, but that's a bit too much to exercise, right? No, so another Doomcock. Yeah, basically, everything that you've heard from Doomcock has either been a massive fucking lie or they've basically reshot the entire film in the last six months because... I'm not defending Doomcock here, but if he was right... They may have changed things, but ultimately we will never know. So he no. may have been right with some of the rumors and stuff, but what like does I say, it, we will. Well, you know, what does it matter when the end product is not what he he's telling you it's going to be? So it's irrelevant. Well, is that, I mean, one, one of the rumors was uh, Mads Mikkel, Middle. I can't say his name. Mads's character was <laughs> the dude from Rangers of the Lost Ark that had that imprint in his hand. How would it be? Uh, his face oh. literally melded off at the first Yeah. Part. Well, no, apparently it was because he, yeah, he had basically gone back in time. Marty! Changed, yeah, so that was all bullshit. There was other, there was other rumours where Indy dies and Helena, the young Indy meets the old Indy and the young Indy dies to say And then gives Helena and They've recut she the takes Helena the in Raiders, yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark, reenacting Indiana Jones scenes, and it ends with Helena will return again. It was a grasp when he when he heard the rumors, but generally, even they reshot the whole thing in six months. Doomcock's sources are fucking idiots who are just lying. Yeah. Or, no, but conversely, how do we know he hasn't changed the course of history? Oh my god. I, my whole life could be, I, we could be living uh, uh, in a timeline that we originally weren't were meant to live in. Like, I could be uh, handsome and have. <laughs> All right, let's not push the boat out. Fucking hell. It's not wow. too ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but seriously, he may have changed the course of the way the film, but like I say, we don't know no, because it's not know. like they're gonna. It's not no. like they are gonna release the Blu-ray and we with didn't. special endings <laughs> designed yeah. by Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Here we go. No, that, <laughs> that, that that shit is too far even for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's too yeah. Far. I, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. I wouldn't Dominique. believe. I, I would. Sorry, sure. I would have found those predictions very hard to believe. And, and like no matter what they've done, know, they have never but, been that bad. Like but they, Kathleen Kennedy's her own worst enemy, though, Sean, because she's yeah. made things so fucking abhorrent for Star Wars that if they turn around and went, yeah, apparently Indiana Jones turns up at a gay pride event in twenty twenty three, dresses an absolute mincer with with a with a man giant, you'd be like, yeah, kind of figures. So she's <laughs> yeah, her own worst enemy, probably. Do- Dominique, Dominique on last movie at poster said, "I hope this movie also lectures on the Vietnam War." It doesn't. There's no lecturing. I There's would, literally no lecturing on it. I it would is have, just action. I, I was kind of hoping for um, like some kind of Vietnam War footage, like you know, like they, like if I was to, um, if I had a hand in writing this movie, I would, of course, you know, you're talking to a, a fanatic on the subject, but I would have found <laughs> a way for them to like 
Shangri-La, but it was set in, it's actually located in Vietnam and they'd had to go to Vietnam at some point during the, oh, yeah. think about, yeah. what, think about what an awesome like set piece or that would have been like, they had to go into, they had to sneak into Vietnam during the middle of the war, infiltrate, you know, all like imagine like uh, going up a, they could have took a riff on apocalypse now and had like a trip up the river while the war's going on. And you, you could have got these like interesting little, bits and pieces and you know what i'm saying like just just imagine yeah. it you know sorry can i just read one of the comments from the site as well uh blight dyer says um when i get younger i want boba phil's hair oh thank you <laughs> i don't know what I don't, just, what does that mean I don't know. my hair it's I mean, it's very hair like, a, hair like a broom it looks yeah. like it looks like a it looks like a old half retired hooker's minge <laughs> Shut up! I'm I'm only here for the eye candy. So, oh, sorry, I didn't uh, turn my camera on then. Yeah. Tro- Tropy <laughs> says we're selling out. Well, Phil's not selling out. It might sound like I'm selling out, but oh yeah, Phil's, yeah. Go, go, no, go I would watch sell, if, if Disney wrong. if Disney offered me like you know some Mars bars, I'd sell out. <laughs> but they haven't, <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm never. We'll, give you, we'll give you a Mars bar and a packet of crisps. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll think. And I'll think your bum for ten minutes. Yeah. Um, taking thanks for taking one for the team, fellas. You're welcome. Hauling them, Ratharas. I can't read that. Um, Who's your ask? Come to please bring back Dom. I don't know who the fuck Dom is, but I keep hearing his name. Some loser. <laughs> Um, I could change my name to Dom and come back if that'll make you feel better. I oh no, know yeah, we, we just haven't seen he, Dom for a while. He, he, he's still he's actually still active in the uh, our private yeah. Slack channel. He just doesn't. Uh, he said that. Well, I talk um, to you any of you lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says like he says that like he wants to do the live streaming, but these assholes in the chat are just make it intolerable for him. So these these English <laughs> pigs. <laughs> so anyway, back. Back to the movie. Uh, we'll, we'll close up now. So, Sean, you're going to go and see it. Matt, again, star factor out of five? Three and a half to four out of five. Okie doke. I'm still sticking with my a solid two out of five uh, okay. with it. That may change. Like I say, I will give it a, another go when it comes out on streaming. And like I say, we will be talking about it on Sunday. So hopefully everybody's seen it on Sunday so we can have a good old discussion. In uh, the wag then. I might not make it Sunday because uh, family is coming in that would not be able to make it in on the 4th of July. So they're wanting to do the, they're wanting to do the 4th of July over the weekend. So I can't make it. 4th of July? What's that? Is that, where the, we gave, is that where we gave you your country back and said, "Yeah, take it, shit." Yeah, that's, that's when we thought. That's when we thought. Do you know what? We've really had enough of them. Just let them go. It's, it's, it's where we went. Hold on a minute. You're throwing tea into the sea. This is fucking outrageous, you heathens. Yeah, get on with it. <laughs> no, Fourth of July. You're confusing that with something else. Fourth of July is when we celebrate the invention of hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully, hopefully um, Yoda will hopefully Yoda will see it between now and Sunday, and we know Reneg is going to see it tomorrow. Reneg, want to join in on the live stream on Sunday, my friend? Is is that how you pronounce his name? I well, I, I've, never, I've, I've no idea what the fuck it is. What is the character? I don't even know what the character is on his. What? Is, yeah, what does Reneg even mean? I don't. We'll have to ask him. I That's a discussion I'm, for another live stream, which will be next week. <laughs> Reneg, guy. You but, know what? Um, you know, you, you know what? The fact that we've got more people watching it and interacting with us on a on a Wednesday at two o'clock tells you something about the time uh, and the and the Sunday <laughs> the Sunday uh, time slot. You know, just saying. I know. Um, like I say, we are going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, everybody on the chat again, thank you for joining us. Make sure that you go to the Last Movie Outpost for all of your movie news, reviews, and everything cool about films in the meantime make sure you find hang on where's all the social media yes make sure you follow us on all social media like twitter and myspace um and um facebook and instagram and all that it's all down there it's, Read all uh, that. Go there. it's uh 1 p.m eastern standard time on sundays uh 12 uh central time and what six o'clock p.m you guys time six six real time 
Oh, hang on, it's 12 p.m. CST and 6 p.m. UK time. Whatever. We put it. Go, go <laughs> well, it was an hour between frames. There'll be a. Yeah. They'll just go. On, Honestly, just, if you're the first hour, if you subscribe to the channel, there'll be a little you know waiting room pop yeah. up, and you'll see it. And also, the first hour is where we're warming up anyway. So <laughs> it's actually <laughs> we not, don't really. <laughs> It, it's actually not as good as these impromptu streams, to be honest with you. We come yeah. on there and Yoda groans and grunts around. And we, we complain about Star Wars and we complain about Star Trek. And we just we complain about Marvel and Kathleen Kennedy. And it's like the most boringest, grindiest. Like, oh, it's terrible. Not if you're old. Actually, it's great. Actually, can I uh, say one thing? Phil, did you see? A, did you have a new trailer for Oppenheimer at the beginning of the Yes. Minute? Yes. Oh, mate. That does look quite good. Money. Why would, guys, um, guys, you're going to go see that when Barbie's going to be playing the same weekend? Unless <coughs> Margot Robbie gets her cunt out, I'm not interested in seeing Barbie. Well, you don't know until you watch Mind the, the language because we get monetized. We, well, Sorry. not now. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I think we passed that point when you screamed goop, Phil. I, I, I think we've just, a big gate has just realized that with that one word and my pronunciation of it, that I am not a Mancunian. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah like I say thank you for joining us make sure you go to the live stream subscribe to the channel like some blah 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 and share and tell everybody you know to come into our channel uh, and whatever else is they say like and subscribe I don't know um, but, but guys thanks everybody and we'll see you on the next live stream Marty indeed